Hi, in today's video we will be going over intermolecular forces, or IMF. The first distinction we need to make is the difference between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces, which are bonding forces, exist within each molecule. These forces influence the chemical properties of the substance. Intermolecular forces, which are non-bonding forces, exist between the molecules. These forces influence the physical properties of the substance, such as boiling point. Intermolecular forces are due to the attraction between molecules as a result of partial charges, or the attraction between ions and molecules. Bonding forces are relatively strong because they involve larger charges that are closer together. Intermolecular forces are relatively weak because they typically involve smaller charges that are farther apart. Bonding forces that you should be familiar with include ionic bonds and covalent bonds. The first intermolecular force we will look at is called ion-dipole forces. When an ion and a nearby polar molecule attract one another, an ion-dipole force results. Sodium chloride dissolving in water is a typical example of an ion-dipole interaction. The ions become separated because the attraction between the ions and the oppositely charged poles of the H2O molecules overcome the attraction between the ions themselves. Next we will look at dipole-dipole forces. When polar molecules are near one another, as in liquids and solids, their partial charges act as electric fields that orient themselves and give rise to dipole-dipole forces. The positive pole of one molecule attracts the negative pole of another. A unique type of dipole-dipole force, called hydrogen bonding, or H-bonding, arises between molecules that have a hydrogen atom bonded to a small, highly electronegative atom with lone electron pairs such as nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine atoms. The NH, OH, and FH bonds are very polar, so electron density is withdrawn from the H atom. As a result, the partially positive H of one of the molecules is attracted to the partially negative lone pair on the N, O, or F of another molecule resulting in a hydrogen bond or H bond. The atom sequence that allows hydrogen bonding to form is shown here. The small sizes of N, O, and F are essential to hydrogen bonding for the following reason. The small size and high electronegativity of these atoms results in their covalently bonded H atom becoming highly positive. It allows the lone pair of the other N, O, or F to come close to the H resulting in a short, strong intermolecular attraction. Next we will discuss dispersion forces, also known as London forces, or London dispersion forces. First, we must introduce the concept of polarizability. Electrons are often viewed as localized on a particular atom. They are typically pictured as clouds of negative charge. These electron clouds can be distorted. In a nonpolar molecule, this distortion creates a temporary, induced dipole moment. The ease with which the electron cloud can be distorted is called its polarizability. Smaller atoms or ions are less polarizable than larger ones because their electrons are closer to the nucleus and therefore held more tightly. The attraction between molecules that results from these induced dipoles is called dispersion forces. 
Dispersion forces exist in almost all types of molecules. Our focus will be on how dispersion forces affect nonpolar molecules, or molecules without a permanent dipole. Dispersion forces are caused by the momentary distortion of electrons and are therefore present in all atoms, ions, and molecules. Picture a molecule of bromine. Averaged over time, the electrons are distributed evenly around the atoms, so the molecule is nonpolar. But at any instant, a momentary distortion may cause some electrons to be unevenly distributed around the molecule, causing a temporary or instantaneous dipole. When molecules of bromine come into close contact with one another, the resulting attraction between them is called dispersion forces. The larger and more polarizable a particle, the larger the magnitude of the dispersion forces. Hence, molecular bromine exists as a liquid at room temperature, whereas chlorine exists as a gas. Bromine is larger and more polarizable, so the dispersion forces that exist between Br2 molecules is greater compared to the smaller, less polarizable Cl2. Dispersion forces are the only force existing between nonpolar particles. But because they exist between all particles, dispersion forces contribute to the overall energy of attraction of all substances. Polarizability depends on the number of electrons, which is directly related to molar mass. Larger particles are composed of more atoms and contain more electrons. Therefore, larger atoms or molecules have stronger dispersion forces relative to smaller particles. For example, molar masses increase down the halogens and the noble gases, so dispersion forces increase and so do boiling points. For nonpolar molecules with the same molar mass, strength of the dispersion forces is influenced by molecular shape. Shapes that allow more points of contact have more area over which to form dispersion forces. Finally, we will look at some examples comparing boiling points between two substances and explain the observation based on intermolecular forces.